Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video we will be looking at Milgram situational variables affecting obedience study which you need to know for AQA level psychology in the subtopic of social influence. I hope you enjoy this video and find it helpful. Let's get started. Milgram found three variables to affect obedience, proximity, location, and uniform. Proximity. In Milgram's original study, the teacher and learner were in adjoining rooms. The teacher could hear the learner but not see him. Proximity between the teacher and learner was found to affect obedience and proximity between the experimenter, authority figure, and teacher was found to affect obedience. Milgram conducted three variations for proximity. In a proximity variation, when the teacher and learner were in the same room and the teacher could see the distress the learner was going through due to the consequences of their actions obedience rates declined to 40%. In a touch proximity variation, when the teacher was tasked with forcing the learner's hand onto a shock plate obedience declined to 30%. In a remote instructions variation, when the experimenter left the room and gave orders over a telephone only 20.5% of participants went all the way to 450 volts and participants frequently pretended to give shocks or gave weaker ones when they were asked to. This suggests that the closer people are to observe the consequences of their actions the lower the obedience rates as more people resisted in Milgram's proximity study. When people are able to feel detached from the consequences of their actions e.g. not being able to see them firsthand, obedience is higher. It could also suggest that the decreased proximity to the authority figure allowed participants to return to a more autonomous state, e.g. agentic state. Location. In Milgram's original study, it was conducted at the prestigious Yale University which added to the perceived legitimacy of the authority figure giving orders. Location and environment were found to affect the amount of perceived legitimate authority that the person giving orders had. Milgram recreated his obedience study in a run downtown office block in Connecticut and found obedience rates fell from 60.5% to 47.5%, a 17.5% decrease. This suggests that location changes the people's perceived legitimacy of an authority figure as obedience to an authority figure was lower in the rundown office block than the well-respected University of Yale. Uniforms. In Milgram's original study, the researcher wore a white lab coat which is believed to have added to his perceived authority. Uniforms can impact obedience rates with those wearing them being perceived as having legitimate authority and people more likely to obey their orders. In one variation the experimenter was called away because of an inconvenient telephone call right at the start of the procedure. The role of the experimenter was taken over by an ordinary member of the public in everyday clothes rather than a lab coat. The obedience rate dropped to 20%, the lowest of these variations. This suggests that uniform does act as a strong visual authority symbol and a cue to behave. In an obedient manner, as obedience was higher when the person giving the orders was wearing a white lab coat than when the person giving the orders was wearing ordinary everyday clothes. Milgram's study has several strengths and limitations. A strength of Milgram's situational variables research is that there is supporting research. Bickman, 1974, conducted a field experiment in New York and found that when a research assistant dressed as a milkman and ordered people to pick up rubbish, loan money to a complete stranger or move away from a bus stop obedience rates was 14%, when dressed in normal civilian clothing obedience increased to 19% and when dressed as a security guard obedience increased to 38%. This is a strength because it suggests that the situational variables and the authority figure's appearance and role have a substantial impact on individuals' obedience levels in real-world scenarios, corroborating the significance of these factors in influencing obedience behavior. A strength of Milgram's situational variables research is that it has high control of variables. Milgram systematically altered one variable at a time to test the effects of obedience. Other variables were kept consistent, as the study was replicated many times with over 1,000 participants. This is a strength because it suggests that the meticulous control of variables in Milgram's research allows for a focused examination of the impact of each situational factor on obedience, leading to more precise and reliable findings.
A limitation of Milgram's situational variable study is that it suffers from gender bias. Milgram's sample only consisted of male participants. Females for example may be more likely to obey an authority figure, as females are often socialized in some cultures to be more complaint and submissive. This suggests the study ignores or minimizes the difference between men and women in relation to obedience to authority figures. This is a limitation because it suggests that the results of the study cannot be generalized to other genders e.g. women. However, Bushman, 1988, found that when female assistants dressed in a police-styled uniform and asked people passing by to loan her money for a parking meter obedience rates were as high as 72%. This lowered to 48% when dressed as a businesswoman or 52% when dressed as a beggar highlighting the power of uniforms in obedience. This is a strength because it suggests that the attire and role played by a female authority figure can still significantly influence obedience rates, demonstrating the powerful impact of uniforms in shaping individuals' obedience behavior in different contexts. A limitation of Milgram's situational variables research is that it suffers from cultural bias. The sample only consists of Americans. America is an individualist culture, where people are generally less obedient, and the results may be different in collectivist cultures, e.g. China. This is a limitation because it suggests that the results cannot be generalized to other cultures and countries. However, Miranda et al., 1981, found over 90% obedience in Spanish students. Further to this Muse and Ragemakers, 1986, used a more realistic procedure than Milgram's to study obedience in Dutch participants. The participants were ordered to say stressful things in an interview to someone, a confederate, desperate for a job. 90% of the participants obeyed. The researchers also replicated Milgram's study concerning proximity. When the person giving the orders was not present, obedience decreased dramatically. This is a strength because it suggests that the obedience rates found in Milgram's research can be generalized to other countries. However, Smith and Bond, 1998, noted that most replications have taken place in Western societies, e.g. Spain, culturally not that different from the USA, where they have similar beliefs about the role of authority. They identified that there were just two replications that took place in non-Western countries, India and Jordan, between 1968 and 1985. This is a limitation because it suggests that the generalizability of obedience research findings may only be limited to Western societies and may not fully capture the diversity of cultural perspectives on authority and obedience present in non-Western countries like India and Jordan. A limitation of Milgram's situational variable study is that his study lacks internal validity. Orn and Holland, 1968, suggest participants in Milgram's variations were even more likely to realize the procedure was fake because of the extra experimental manipulation. In the variation where a member of the public replaced the experimenter, even Milgram recognized this was so contrived that some participants may have worked it out. This is a limitation because it suggests that it is unclear whether the results of Milgram's study are due to obedience or because the participants saw the deception and play acted, i.e. in response to demand characteristics. A limitation of Milgram's situational variable study is that his research has dangerous research implications. David Mandel, 1998, argued that Milgram's findings provide an excuse or alibi for evil behavior. In his view, it is offensive to survivors of the Holocaust to suggest that the Nazis were simply obeying orders. Milgram's explanation also ignores the role of dispositional factors, such as personality, implying that the Nazis were victims of situational factors beyond their control. This is a limitation because it suggests that Milgram's study oversimplifies the complex nature of evil behavior, particularly in historical contexts like the Holocaust, where personal responsibility and individual traits may play a crucial role in understanding such atrocities. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed this video please like and subscribe for more content like this. Bye.